Good day and welcome to another episode of Step Up. I'm very excited. As you can see, we didn't change because we're still on this topic. We are talking forever and a day because you know what? <sighs> Ladies, gentlemen, whoever you need to get a hold of, to get involved in this topic, you can get our information at the bottom of the screen. You can contact us. You can send us emails. All the details is at the bottom of the screen. Please do. We want to connect with you. We want to talk with you. With me is my sister in Christ, my friend, my my sister. <laughs> bottom line, he's yeah. closer than a friend. Yeah. Um, welcome, Amanda. Welcome back and welcome back and welcome back and welcome back is what i want to say thank you chantal it's a privilege to be with you mm. and i think it's such a privilege just to speak truth into relationships into women into men into marriages and today we will deal with a few serious stuff really serious, yeah, stuff. serious stuff we are i'm, I'm excited yeah. my brain is going like a hundred miles an hour because this is such a relevant topic for now yeah. We, the, the good thing about us in this topic is we are pastors yes. and we counsel people. Yeah. So we're talking from a place of realness, yeah. a yeah. place of relevancy. Yeah. This is relevant in yeah. the now. Yeah. This is not a topic that I yeah. heard somebody spoke over WhatsApp, over yeah. phone or somebody saw, I saw it on Facebook. No, 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 no. This is real to our hearts. Yeah. This is real to where we are at this moment, even where you are, because you know someone that is struggling emotionally, that has not dealt with the past, because yeah. that's really what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't dealt from my past. Yeah. Last week we yeah. stopped. We started on emotional disadvantage. You're emotional. Um, you're emotionally unstable, and we started with you as a person. Today yeah. we're going a little bit deeper, yeah. Yeah. and we're going to start. And Amanda is the the person that 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 is that is here on step up to basically share her knowledge and her experience yeah. and her wisdom in this yeah. topic. As a married woman, I'm still yeah. single, yeah. and yeah. Um, there's a lot of things we talked yeah. about during the break yeah. earlier. And um, there's so many things that I'm learning as I'm sitting yeah, here yeah. being single and not being married. Yeah, so there's questions yeah. I cannot answer. Yeah. And that's why we get the experts in to answer <laughs> the questions and to talk to us about this. Yeah. Amanda, we're going to talk about emotional affairs. Ooh. Yes, a very <laughs> serious topic, a very relevant topic. And now topic. And a now topic. I'm counseling so many people at this stage that struggle because of emotional affairs. Mm. They were caught, caught off guard. Unaware. They were not aware what was happening to them. They did not wake up one morning and decide, I want an emotional affair. They grew a friendship that grew too deep into a place where, uh, where, what we call a, an emotional affair or emotional infidelity. I want you to repeat that old statement because I want people to, this is yes. not something that we say and yes. it's on the ear. No, 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 no. you've got to hear it's very, yeah. very, very deep yeah. this morning yeah. or today. This is something that we want you to drink yeah. within your spirit. So yes. I want you to repeat that whole first okay. section. Again. Where we, a, a what healthy, is an emotional affair? It is, let me say it this way. It is where a healthy relationship, a healthy friendship grew hmm. too deep, too far, too far, too secret, too many secrets were, were dealt between two people that used to be good friends, healthy friends, into a place where they started to deal, to share secrets. Intimate that they, things. And intimate things that their spouses don't know anything about. A place where we start to pray on each other's affirmation, pray on each other's compliments, and thrive on that deeper level of friendship. It's not a place where you woke up one morning and decided, I'm going to to, to one of my friends and I want to build a um, emotional affair with this person. It's absolutely a place where we are caught off guard. It's a place where we did not plan this. At first, we did not even think about sharing um, secrets. I talk but about it, my husband or I talk I about my wife talk about to my this wife, other person. To this other person. But you maybe woke up this morning, you felt uh, really uh, hurt by something your husband said, and you happened to end up with this friend and just mentioning 
and the friend would take this maybe a little bit further, but Sometimes. I would do this, I would do that, and in my marriage this will never happen. And you start to, to, to color a picture that's actually not always realistic. Yeah, and can I just say and, that it, that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's no. coming out of a bad place. No, an emotional affair never hardly starts. ever starts from a bad place. You know, people would tell me, they would say, Amanda, I, I never thought I will do this. I never planned to do this. This is something I did not want in my life. So it's a, it's a place where you are, and I can't emphasize this, uh, you know, strong enough. enough. You are caught of Un God. Unaware. Unaware. You did not go over the boundaries between you and that friend, whether it's, you know. Um, Chantal, in my own life, I can share one, one testimony. Mm. I had a friend, not a best friend, but a, a good friend, and um, and she won't mind that I won't mention names, but she mm. won't mind me sharing this because she also got the freedom from what happened in our friendship. Mm. She did not work on a Friday afternoon, and she actually discovered that my husband also had off Friday afternoons, and she went through a. a challenging time in her marriage at that time at that time so she would just come and ring the bell and whenever he was home my husband she would come and sit and say listen give me um, a bit of advice give me counsel give me advice and then one day she came to me and she said you know your husband comforted me so well Friday and all of a sudden I realized that um, because of her need and because she started to lean on to uh, our marriage always looks uh, ideally, it, it, it really looks like, like an happy perfect, marriage, perfect a way. perfect one, although we also have storms. Of we course. We also have storms. All marriages have storms. Mm. She would trust, come and, uh, uh, or she, she started to put a trust in his counsel to help her grow her marriage. And she fell um, in love with my husband. She became emotionally attached to him because he was everything her husband because was not he was everything her husband was not so we ended up and i realized this and i started to counsel her and give her good counsel and i asked my husband just to step back and he gladly did that um, because he also did not know how to handle the situation and she got a healing many secrets came out secrets she had that influenced her her marriage and God just came in and he healed her but it took quite a bit of maturity also from my side to see the brokenness and to, to, to realize what was going on. It's not a sexual affair, but the emotional affair is many times more damaging because it breached trust. Mm. Emotionally, we, we need to attach uh, in, in a very healthy way to our spouses. We need to build our emotional um, relationship more than the um, intimate side because from a healthy emotional marriage flow a healthy intimate life this is why I want this is yeah. my next point this yeah. is my next point yeah. from a healthy emotional yeah. relationship yeah. within your marriage yeah. flows a healthy intimate yes. relationship yes. am I right this is what that's you right now, yeah. Amanda, we can talk about this forever and a day because, like I said, we're in the ministry. Yeah. So it's, it's, we, we have quite a lot to talk about yeah. in this specific point, on this specific topic. We all say, and, 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 and now I'm just going to say this to waste in my mind because I want to I drive this thing home. Yes. We want to exhaust this point. Yeah. Um, we, all, <laughs> we all say there's this other woman or this other man at work. Yeah. And we make him out to be the Jezebel, yeah. the devil, yeah. the Delilahs, everything that is from hell. But you know what? My question is, how did you send your husband or your wife out this morning? Because we want to point the fingers to everybody else, yeah. to everybody yeah. else. But how, how can I expect good results? when I only complain to my husband or complain he's that bad, yeah. or my wife, yeah. she's doing 
everybody's cooking good yes. except your wife is cooking yeah. good. Everybody's garden is doing good, but it's ca- except my yeah. husband. So we cannot want to have this good marriage, but I find fault with everything he or she does. That's right. That's where the emotional blocks is coming out of the yeah. wall. Am I right? Yeah. Can we? Can you talk about yeah. that? Shut down. Because we all want to say that this woman or this man that I that I cried, I just broke out at you know I broke down this morning at work and somebody came and comforted me yeah. because that person's also Christian, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Nobody woke up this morning yeah. and said I want to be comforted by somebody at work. Yeah. Nobody woke. Yeah. But how did I leave my yes. bed? Yes, yes, that's right. I want to say how did I how did I fall asleep last night? Did I fall asleep angry? Did we had quality time together? Do I trust Did my I husband? Speak about it? Do I trust my husband to my wife with what happened today, or do I find my comfort at, at uh, maybe half an hour after work at the, you know having a sundown or somewhere? Just like people talk about yeah, 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 having yeah, yeah. sundowners and, and going for a cocktail, and going for a cocktail or going for a coffee after work, or do I really trust my husband or my wife? my spouse in such a way that I can come home and just fall on his lap and say, just hold me for a minute. It was such a stressful day. I just need the energy of your happiness or your comfort to rekindle, to revive what happened to me today. We need to, how do we go to bed? How do we leave home in the morning? Do we leave home assured that I have my husband, he, he's got my back, I've, I've got his back, we prayed together, we, we went to bed happy, we did not, you know the word of God says, don't let yeah. the sun sit on your yeah. anger, yeah, lest yeah, you yeah. give a foothold to Satan. So if you go out of your home, if you leave not with the shoes of peace on your feet, you are not protected. The peace of God is not with you. You cannot make proper decisions. So when you, you see, you, 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 when you come to work, you have a breakdown and maybe you would talk to people at your work about what happened at home. This is not right. You should settle your issues. You, you should make sure that you have emotional relationships and a, and a healthy one with your husband, with your wife, sit down, Talk through things. Don't throw uh, around things, but sit and talk through issues Hmm. and make sure that the peace of God rule, that uh, his character, his um, uh, um, counsel rule in your home, rule in your relationship. Take take time out. Take time out. Take a long bath. Lit the candles. Let the bubbles come and just relax in each other's presence. Somebody said to me many, many years ago, um, um, a friend of mine, he said to me, one of his secret places in his home with his wife is his bathroom. She's got a very big bathroom. And in his bathroom, there's a a, a chair, very comfortable chair with candles and a a table. So that's where they have conversation. That's where the deals are made. That's important. I love that. And I thought to myself, one day when I get married, that should be my counseling room. (laughs) Yes, And, and very often, uh, when I'm stressed out, I like to bath, and I would tell us Barton, come and sit with me. And he would just come and sit there. And, and sometimes it's just silence. But that absolute knowing, wow, this, is, beautiful. this is the man I trust. I don't even need to speak. He's just there to comfort me. His presence is a comfort. His presence fulfills. Emotional fulfillment is the key to a happy marriage. Emotional yeah. fulfillment is the key to a happy yeah. marriage. Yeah. We're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. I want to talk when we come back after the break about can you handle the truth once yes. if your husband or your wife is not happy and um, they, they're they giving it to you. I won't say harsh, but they're giving yeah. you the naked truth. Can you yeah. handle it? Yeah. Because you've got to have strong legs yeah. to handle the truth. We'll yeah. be right back. Hi, I'm Chantal White from Step Up and I want to take this opportunity to invite all the ladies to join me every Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock on Live CBN. All the details for live streaming is at the bottom of the screen. This is a program where we talk about women, to women, about everyday issues. Very, very interesting topics we deal with 
on a, on a weekly basis. Don't miss me every Tuesday evening. We have a repeat on a Wednesday morning, 12.30, and a Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock. See you girls soon. Ladies and gentlemen, well, now we're back to gentlemen as well. <laughs> Welcome back to Step Up. I'm excited about this topic. Amanda LaRue is with me. We're talking about something very, very serious in the 21st century. Um, emotional affairs and emotional situations that, is just, that can just actually break up your whole marriage and break up your life and destroy yeah. your life really yeah. and truly. Yeah. And we ended off by saying an, an, an emotional, healthy person or, or relationship yeah. built any an emotional, healthy marriage. marriage. Then we ended off, and yeah. I asked the question: yeah. When you when the, when you guys are having a conversation, can you handle the truth? If your spouse say to you, Amanda, I don't like what you did, yes. or I don't like, baby, honey, whatever you call him, what you said to me, or how <laughs> you did it, can you handle it? Yes. How do we handle it? How do we handle the truth? in marriage oh well Chantal you know the word of God says the truth will set you, you free you will know it and want you know but it. but let me tell <laughs> you I found that the truth can cause a big war in a marriage if we handle it in the a wrong way wrong way immature a mature person will always be open for counsel and positive mm. critique positive positive critique that's critique. very important and you see, it's important for us to be open for, for, for this kind of counsel as well. So how do we handle when your husband, and I'm now a wife, I will, <laughs> I'm tomorrow, the 15th, I will be married 32 years. So wow. we survived huge, huge storms Massive and storms. fantastic times. And we are at a wow. really good place in our marriage. Um, Chantal, and it's because we decided to be radiant, open, and wow. honest about our feelings and where we are, and not to criticize, but to guide each other into a place where we understand the need of each mm. other. Where we and we really do spend a lot of time in at bathing together and lying that. on the couch with the legs crossed over and just chatting hours away or being silent even for an hour or two, trying to reconnect. The most important thing in marriage is our emotions, is to be emotionally connected. To, you know, the soul tie between a husband and a wife is very important because that is what God can also use to, to, to show and to reveal and to, to, for us to discern when your spouse is not in a good place because mm. you need to discern, you need to meet his need, his emotional need, you need to meet her emotional need. And for that, we need to build a strong emotional tie between us, a healthy tie. Uh, and yes, um, for us being 32 years married, my husband is a very soft man, but a very straightforward man. And from time to time, I had to deal with the bare truth. The naked truth. The naked truth. And Chantal, only Holy Spirit can help us to not respond or react but to respond in a mature way. If you react to the truth, if, if you react in throwing tantrums, in trying to, to, to um, prove yourself right, being self-righteous, it will never work. But to just give way and listen. The, the main thing about the truth is to listen with um, uh, um, an open mind, an open heart, and, and to take the counsel and then what I've learned in my, in my marriage is to ask him, how do you think, how can we address the irritation or whatever was the mm -hmm, truth that mm -hmm. he... At that time. Th at that time. And I would, I've learned to allow him to guide me because, I mean, God is the center 
Holy Spirit is the center and Jesus of marriage. We have his counsel. Amen. And, Amen. and I had to learn to trust Jesus in my husband, to trust the counsel of Holy Spirit in my husband. So most of the times, um, I would just allow him to guide me out of trouble. Mm. And um, this is for me personally, the place where we found our balance in dealing with the truth. Amanda, I want to, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah. my mind is going, yeah. I want to ask this. What do I, what do you say? Because I knew somebody back in the day very, 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 very well. Um, I'm talking about 15, 18 years ago. One of the things he used to say to me was, it was a young couple, he said to me, I'm happily married, but I'm lonely. Yeah. Where is that coming from? Okay. Because the Holy Spirit is just bringing so many things under my yeah. attention. That's one thing I want to yeah. ask. The second thing, I mean, you've got points out to avoid certain things. But before we get there, yeah. the other thing I want to talk about, sometimes, and I had this with my father, and I'm speaking now, yeah, um, me and my father were very close. Yeah. And there was yeah. things my dad told me he didn't tell yeah. my mother. Yeah. So I want yeah. to address that as well, because yeah. there's a lot yeah. of relationships yeah. that, that, that wives, yeah. they have outbursts when yeah. their husbands speak to them, yeah. so the husband speak to the daughter. Yeah. In my case, it was like that. Yeah. Yeah. You have emotional, healthy relationships yeah. in marriages yeah. after 20 years, 18 years, 50, yeah. but there's no sexual intercourse within the yeah. marriage. Yeah. So this thing is so big, yeah. you, don't have, you don't get yeah. the end of it. Yeah. So let's start with the one thing, let me, let me try to recap. <laughs> Loneliness. I'm happy, yeah. but I'm lonely. Yeah. And you see, you can be happy in a marriage, but lonely because the, um, the emotional, healthy part of the relationship never developed. You maybe have a great intimate uh, um, uh, um, relationship in your marriage. You maybe be financially um, uh, well away and looked after, but you never get the time to share your heart with you uh, about your feelings, your challenges in life with your, with your partner. And it can be because of time, there's no time. Maybe he's a business person, maybe you're a businesswoman, maybe you're in ministry, in full-time ministry, and you don't have enough face time. Mm. You know, I've learned, um, I've done 15 years of, 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 of counseling and I grew lonely and my husband also grew lonely because tonight I was so exhausted after all the sessions of doing um, counseling that I just didn't want to speak. I just, the, the, there was nothing to the say relationship from between us deteriorated because we did not communicate properly. Because this whole and day you were talking and listening. This whole day I was talking, listening, praying, listening to issues. So I closed my ear for my husband's need. And I end up growing lonely in my marriage for a season. And I did not realize it, uh, um, Chantal. I never allowed myself to, to just come and say, love you, I'm so tired tonight come and rub my legs or let's take a bath. So for a few months, we neglected the emotional side of our, and the, and the um, you know, for us to build a relationship and to build a proper emotional, healthy relationship, you need to communicate. Communication is the most important thing. So when you don't communicate, you disconnect yourself from the heart of your, of your, of your partner and you will feel lonely. When you are disconnected from the heart of God, you are lonely. You are without that's true, him. That's true. When you are disconnected from the love. So when you are too busy, you don't have proper time for intimacy. Intimacy can easily change to just uh, um, meet a sexual desire or a sexual need. And, and you neglect intimacy. Intimacy, the, what we call in, 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 in marriage foreplay, starts with conversation. It starts mm. with sitting on one bench. It starts with um, bathing together, drinking a nice cup of coffee and just holding hands. And there's so much value in physical contact. And when we neglect that, you grow lonely. Oh. But at first, you, were, you, you know, you don't realize until the day, 
like in my case, where I sat down and I thought, why do I feel such a void in my heart, such a void in my, in my being? And, um, and by asking Holy Spirit, just tell me, why do I feel so lonely? I actually had a dream about how lonely I feel. He could reveal to me, but Amanda, you used, used to lie on the couch together with your, your legs crossed and talking hours away, but there's no more time. You disconnected yourself from the heart of your husband. You have disconnected your love. You know, love grows. Love is not, love is not the emotion. Love is a decision. We all know that. It's a commitment. Mm. But the commitment can only grow when you spend time with the one that you say you love. So being so busy counseling people, we neglected the intimate um, emotional side of our marriage and we had to reconnect. We had to uh, uh, do not only date nights, many date nights are very focused on the physical, but date nights reconnecting heart to heart, reconnecting and, 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 and to cultivate again. And we had to do that Amanda. to communicate mm. healthy. So, yeah, now so like. if you guys are yeah. married, intimacy in bed is mm. very important within yeah. marriage. Yeah, intimacy is the most sacred, most beautiful um, gift that God gave to marriage. It's a gift. And um, intimacy in Hebrew, the word is yada. It's the yeah. same word for intimacy with God. To be intimate with God is Yada. It's a spiritual thing more than a physical thing. Sure. The physical um, reward is just the outflow of the beautiful oneness um, that God created in marriage. So intimacy is not sex. Mm. Um, you can have sex with a person you don't even know, That's without true. ever be being Connected. intimate and connected and emotionally connected. Emotional, heal, a, a, a healthy emotional relationship will always flow out like a river into beautiful, healthy intimacy. No need for nothing because the Holy Spirit is your guide in this whole process. So what do I mean by no need of nothing? You don't need books, you don't need films, you don't need nothing to guide you where a, a, a healthy relationship exists, where you are emotionally connected, where you share your life with each, each other, where there's conversation, and conversation is foreplay. So your intimate and the beautiful intimate relationship that we desire can only develop where there is conversation, where there is good communication, where we spend time in each other's presence, where we are focused on each other's needs, mm. not to manipulate or intimidate or, or dominate, but to guide. There's a huge difference between guiding each other. And, and Chantal, I can only speak also from my own life and what I've yeah, seen in, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, council yeah. room. Um, for me, the, the most precious gift that God gave me is a husband that are so focused on my emotions. So he would, even if he has a need for intimacy, and he would discern that I'm tired, he would rather come and rub my legs and mm. make me comfortable. But from that place, I would and I do desire to meet his need as well. So there's no pressure for sex. Wow. Wow. The pressure, pressure and, and uh, sure. pressure, where we pressure each other, um, slavery develops. When we pressure and we manipulate each other to perform, performance will always lead to slavery in a marriage, in a relationship. And we know slavery's end is death. But with this guidance, where we are focused on each other's emotions, where we are focused on each other's needs, we start to develop the dimension what I believe where Jesus and his church is, where he 
He, he is so focused on our needs, on our emotions. He would always guide us to a place of, of, of security and a place of um, satisfaction where you, where you feel so comforted that you are just satisfied with being here. So for me, what I've discovered in my own personal marriage is um, where my husband is more focused on my needs and his needs. But because of that, I always long to meet his mm. needs. We, yeah. we are, we've come to the end of this program and I can tell you girls, my, my mind is sure. just blown with the information that I'm getting. As you know, I'm not married. Um, so all of this is, this is a complete new field that yeah. we are in this morning. There's certain things yeah. that I know because I also counsel people, yeah. um, but this is a whole new field. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's something new on the ear and something new in my spirit. Yeah. But what I want to say is we're going to come back with, we're going to continue with this topic, but I'll, I'll, we're going to continue with um, what to avoid, how to avoid an emotional affair, number yeah. one. One of the things we're going to avoid is, what, one of the things we're going to talk about is a man or a woman that is happily married but is going through a rough patch yeah. emotionally yeah. is never going to leave his wife or his yeah. husband, her husband yes. for you. So we're going to come yes, back yes, um, yes. we're going to continue on this topic and I really believe that you are touched. I am touched. I am, I, my life, you, you, the information coming from you that the Holy Spirit is just pouring out of you, Amanda, is just really blessing me yeah. personally and um, I just look at marriage today so much differently yeah. because you know what I didn't yeah. know what you're saying to me I didn't know that I didn't yeah. know yeah. most of the stuff that you just said yeah. now in this yeah. in the second part of this yeah. of this topic yeah. so we're gonna come back next week and we're gonna continue on this and and I feel blessed to be here and I, I feel blessed to have you and to know you and to share your knowledge yeah. through the grace of yeah. God yeah. with me and yeah. with the ladies and with yeah. the gentlemen yeah yes so God bless you until next time thank you Amanda. thank you Hi, I'm Chantal White from Step Up. Follow my latest article in the brand new Lady Rose magazine. Get your latest copy at the local leading retail stores.